I'll go, you go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. You will enjoy our next segment and you might learn something. Yes, last time we saw him, he was debunking Stephen Hawking. My goodness, this time he's taking on slightly easier prey and debunking a mere politician. Dr. Jamie Matthews joining us, UBC professor of astrophysics. How are you? Hi, right, Jamie. Very good. Good. So we're what are we talking about today? Well, first we're talking about Valentine's Day, yes. obviously, ah. and uh, you know, there's a romance in astronomy, and so send it, shouting out a Valentine's Day card to uh, Urban Rush and the viewers. And here's an actual, a real interstellar nebula, a cloud of gas sprinkled with dust. This is the kind of stuff that will form future generations of stars, and this one just happens to look like a heart. It's beautiful. That's real pretty. And you can go from the scale of the largest Coming down to Earth, uh, here's just a leaf as photographed by uh, Wendy Deakins, art photographer here in Vancouver. Uh, who, so pretty. Uh, yeah, I saw Wendy a heart takes within a heart. Beautiful photo. Well, happy Valentine's yeah. Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Day. On to the debunking. Well, there's nothing more romantic, I think, than the sight of a full moon low <laughs> in, the, in the sky. Even a computer-generated one. Even a computer-generated uh -huh. one, even for a computer-generated astrophysicist like myself. That's so a pretty that, moon. that brings out into a romance, and here's a, a view of the moon, low magnification with a telescope. You can start to see some of the craters in the mountains and the, and the seas of dried lava, which make up the the dark patterns of the face of the man in the moon, which I never see, the rabbit in the moon, whatever people There's see there. There's a rabbit there too? Well, that's what some people say. Yeah, it's I, just know, a, I, don't, I don't see any of it. It's a you lunar know. Rorschach it's, it's Exactly, that's, that's exactly what it is. So this is kind of romantic. Here is the uh, opposite of romance. By the end of my second term. <laughs> We will have the first permanent base on the moon, and it will be American. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Wow, now? that's a bold <laughs> statement. He got he got a lot of guff for that, and yeah. you're about to add to his grief. Yeah, yes. well, it's 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 Newt Lightyear to infinity and beyond. Obviously, his destination is the White House, <laughs> and no further. But it's not infinity. What he's talking about going to the moon, just under four hundred thousand kilometers away. So wow. do you think that Newt will make it to the moon by 2020? Well, let's look back at our history of like cities on the moon. Here's what uh, a lunar city was, would be like in the year 2001 as seen <laughs> by Stanley Kubrick One of my favorite movies, by the way. And one of mm -hmm. mine as well. And to be honest, had things proceeded at the pace that they did from John F. Kennedy's famous speech of putting a man on the moon before the decade is out uh, and until 1968 when 2001 was released and then 69 when humans first uh, set foot on the moon, then this was a logical extrapolation to the year 2001. This is what it would have been like. Yeah. Except we didn't go to the moon for science or economics or technology. We went for politics. And yeah. as soon as the race was won, then the everything slowed down. So this was the moon in 2001. This is the moon in 3001. I want to go there. That looks like a fun moon. <laughs> it's it's oh, a Matt Groening. As depicted by Matt Groening and the people that make Futurama. Uh, and wow, then this show. is the reality. This is the last human outpost on the moon back in 1972, almost 40 years ago, the last time that anyone was on the moon, the Apollo 17 mission. And so the thing is, is we got to kind of start from scratch again. It, it costs in today's dollars about $110 billion to send 12 tourists to the moon to pick up souvenirs at Luna Park. And, and now Newt Gingrich in the next eight years wants to put apparently dozens, hundreds, thousands yeah. of people on the moon. So that's going to be a challenge. Yeah, extrapolate that number out. As so you this go. is a little bit of reality here, is it not? Well, yeah. So here's reality. This is, this is Star Trek today. Uh, this is the International Space Station. This is our only human outpost in space. And it's, it's, this is the orbit of the ISS, and it's just hugging the Earth. And so really it's not boldly going where no one has gone before. It's going up less than the distance between here in Vancouver and Kelowna. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, I mean, literally. That's a stunning <laughs> number. You don't see that very often. <laughs> and here is you know, the trip to the moon, almost 400,000 kilometers away. And so that's a much more intimidating wow. uh, highway sign. Just a little bit. Wow. Okay. And, 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 and so here's a view of, of the horizon of the moon. This is a real picture taken by a Japanese space probe. Uh, it was orbiting the moon with the, uh, the Earth tantalizingly in the distance, sort of reminding you, hey, the Earth is a pretty nice place to live. The moon. Uh, no atmosphere, <laughs> no water, uh, you know, at least you know, there's, there's ice, but it's kind of locked into the rocks and the soil. 
And so it's, it's not you know, a vacation spot. But NASA did have plans to go to the moon, and they were planning to have uh, a small base by the year 2020. That does not look like a really fun place <laughs> to spend the holiday. No, it kind of looks like a trailer park. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of extreme tourism. And, and uh, Barack Obama canceled uh, the, the plans for Americans to return to the moon. And Newt Gingrich, I think, is trying to say, I'm not Obama, and right. I will take you to the moon. But that when, if they went to the moon, uh, if these plans wasn't just anywhere in the moon. It's the South Pole of the moon. It's kind of like going back to the Why historic the... race to the, uh, the Earth's South Pole. Right. Why well, the South Pole of the moon? Well, think of it if you're at the South Pole of the Earth or the North Pole of the Earth. One of the things that we have on uh, was the land of the midnight sun. You know, you've got six months where the sun is above the horizon. And if you're at the South Pole of the moon, the sun will be above the horizon, skimming along the horizon most of the time. And so you're going to have continuous solar power. That's going to be your source of power. There's the answer. The other advantage is there's this crater named the Shackleton Crater, after the uh, explorer in the uh, mm -hmm. South Pole, who, uh, in that crater, it's deep enough that there are parts of the crater that never, ever see direct sunlight. They're always in shadow. And so there may actually be deposits of frozen water, ice, on the surface that you could use as a reservoir for so your So not colony. embedded into the rocks. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's like if you, if you go up into the mountains and you're hiking and in the summer, you find a snow drift that's in, in yeah. the shadows Same in idea. July and August. It's that kind so of So you idea. can wash your hair on the moon. That's right. Which will be God, vitally well, important. Sign me yeah, up. <laughs> now, obviously, you know, if you're going to be on the moon, you're going to want to eat. And so there may be restaurants in the moon. And Domino's Pizza has announced <laughs> they beat Newt Gingrich. They said they are going to have a Domino's Pizza pizzeria on the moon. Now the reason they announced this is because their competition, Pizza Hut, has already delivered pizzas to the International Space Station. So this is their so the, chance to one-up. the midnight munchies on the moon. That's are right. Hey, dude. Could really use a domino. I need a double pepperoni. So the reality is, are we really going to have pizza on the moon? What are you going to eat I on the moon? I don't know. Well, the thing is, is you know, usually astronauts often have to eat dehydrated food, like you know, the de de dehydrated ice cream and so on. So I think there might be a a Canadian, uh, maybe a Swiss chalet on the moon, and here is dehydrated that chalet gravy? sauce yeah, that, that's gravy. already ready to go to the moon. <laughs> the dream has come true. Would you like me to stir the gravy? <laughs> Please. <laughs> and of course, eventually, if Canada has its way, we'll have hockey. Uh, well, on the moon. of course we should. Well, if we'll find ice. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. if there's ice up there already, Jamie. There you go. There's and nothing so, to it. You know, and so that's, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think life on the moon, it'll be, it'll be harsh in many ways, but I mean, it's a starkly beautiful place and a fantastic place to explore for science. It's, yeah. a, it's a museum of the early history of our but solar system. But the idea of Earth. actually making some sort of habitable. Yeah. Stand on well, it, by 2020, it'll be. A, it could be done if yeah. if the United States or other countries put all of their resources in the same way as JFK inspired yeah. the nation to say, yeah. okay, we're going to pull out all the stops and we're going to do this before With the end of the decade. With billion dollars. Yeah. but Newt Gingrich is no JFK. I was going to say, so far, Newt uh, Gingrich hasn't rallied so. his own I think side Newt. of the political yeah. spectrum. <laughs> I like that. I think Newt. <laughs> Newt is mute. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyway. Anyway. Uh, tell us about a couple things you have coming on. All so right. Just pop just up there. Brother Guy, Consul Magno. Yeah. So in a couple of weeks, so we've got Brother Guy as a, a Vatican astronomer, expert on meteorites, fantastic speaker. Uh, he's done things like the Colbert Report. And he's in town giving a couple of talks, and one out at UBC, a free cool. public talk, Discarded Worlds, Astronomical Ideas that were almost I correct. love the title. And uh, on the previous uh, Saturday, he's going to be speaking at the H.R. McMillan Space Center uh, by donation, uh, and also talking a little bit more with the science tying in with uh, modern theology and religion. Interesting. Um, and this week, uh, we've got actually just next door in the, in the uh, Vancouver Convention Center, the American Association for the Advancement of Science. We've got thousands of scientists from all disciplines from across North America gathering in one of the most major science conferences anywhere. Nerd fest. Yeah, nerd fest, but Love there's it. also, uh, keep an eye open, lots of uh, public things where the nerds speak in words of less than 27 syllables. Interesting stuff. And to be accessible. And free for that yeah. one too. I love it. Jamie, thank you so much. Thank you. Hug to infinity and beyond. Week. We're going to take a break. <laughs>